Cataractcoach.com. Post your sneaky A, shallow anterior chamber. We need a torque lens. The eye even had angle closure. Let me show you how to sweep to break these adhesions. Then we're going to stretch that pupil to dilate it so we can do the cataract surgery. Peel away those fibrotic membranes. This is going to be good. Let's get started. So making the paracentesis, you can see that's the maximum pupil dilation with pharmacologic agents. We'll put in some preservative-free lidocaine for anesthesia. And we'll try to separate this a little bit, maybe get a little lidocaine underneath the iris as well. Now we'll put our viscoelastic in, and I want a moderate fill of the anterior chamber. Don't do a maximum fill here, because we're going to need to use more viscoelastic to do viscomedriasis. Here comes the main incision. For the main incision, we're going to use a diamond keratome. And we're going to make a small incision, about 2.2 millimeters. This diamond keratome is a little smaller than that, so we'll uh, enlarge the incision, incision just slightly. If you look carefully at the peripheral iris, you can see the uh, atrophic parts, and this patient did undergo an angle closure episode. She's highly hyperopic, wears plus six glasses for distance. You can see the top of your screen there, the peripheral iridotomy. We're going to sweep here, and look how easy we can break these sneakyae. And it's a gentle sweep, and we freed it up for 360. But that's not going to be enough. We need to also expand the pupil. So put in two choppers, and we're going to do a pupil stretching technique. You can use other instruments as well. The choppers are something I have on my FACO tray. And to push out here towards the angle, nice and gentle. That ought to do it. If you see a little bit of bleeding at the pupil margin, don't worry about it. Notice how I hold that stretch for at least a few seconds before letting go. Now we can also see the fibrotic membranes that we need to peel away later. Here comes more viscoelastic. That's now vis uh, viscomedriasis, expanding the pupil just with the viscoelastic. That's why we only did a partial fill at the beginning of the case. That looks great. That's about a five millimeter pupil. We can work with that. Now let's try to peel off these fibrotic membranes as well. Just use your capsular excess forceps, grab them, and pull in a circumferential matter, not radial. And you'll be able to pull this off pretty easily. If it's totally adherent, you can leave it be or use micro scissors to cut it. A little more viscoelastic. Let's see what we got. Very good. Now, to prevent future sinicae, we definitely want to have a sufficiently large capsular rexus. Remember, this iris can and will stick to the anterior lens capsule, but it really won't stick to the uh, surface of the optic, which in this case is going to be a hydrophobic acrylic IOL, single piece. So we're doing our capsular axis, aiming for about a five or five and a half millimeter capsular axis. The black dots, the limbus, you probably guessed we're going to put a torque lens in. Those are the cardinal meridians. We've already marked the cornea at our steep axis, intended steep axis, which is about, looks like 120 to 130 degree meridian. There we complete the capsular axis. That looks great. And now we'll take the cataract out. This patient it did undergo angle closure. It's highly hyperopic. We're going to put a 29 diopter lens in this eye. That's why they had all these issues. It's a tiny, small, hyperopic eye, short axial length. We tighter dissect. There's our nucleus. And even with this tiny eye, we're able to get that nucleus in a good position. Bringing it up like this through the pupil is going to ensure that the iris is not going to flop around for us. We're not going to run into a risk of damaging the iris. Here comes the FACO probe. You can see the pink sleeve is the smaller one. Here's the chopper. And let's just chop this nucleus in half and aspirate it. We'll be able to aspirate it relatively quickly, and this will go beautifully. Always a pleasure to operate on these patients who are highly hyperopic. It is such a miraculous thing to take them to refractive error of close to Plano after this poor patient's been plus six for so long. Do keep in mind, though, that wearing the plus six glasses on the face does give image magnification and when we go to an IOL with that full power, we're going to have normal image size. So they may lose that magnification that they're used to. But the overall visual we so far improved, the patients are thrilled. There we go. Nucleus is out. That looks great. The rest of the case is simple. The cortex removal, etc. Let's go to the end of the case. There's the IOL and the caps are back at the correct meridian. It looks great. And we're now going to seal up the incisions. You can also, in these cases, if you have any um, anterior sneakate in the angle, you can actually grab that iris with your capsular axis forceps, gently pull it centrally to help release that as well. This patient had a beautiful post-op outcome and has already scheduled the second eye. 
If you have an interesting case, please go to cataractcoach.com and submit it for us. We'd love to see it. It can be anonymous or we'll credit you with the beautiful work. Also, sign up for our free email list. You'll be able to get a free email every single day with something new right to your inbox. And if you need to search for a topic, look, look at this screen. Post your polar videos. You have a post your polar case coming up? Don't waste time on YouTube. Go to cataractcoach.com, look in the search box, type in post your polar. You'll see 10 videos. And you can nail that case and do it right. Thanks for watching.